This October, Tanger invites you to shop pink and save lives. Your donation of $10 or more to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation helps fuel innovative research that brings us closer to a cure. It also unlocks exclusive savings from brands like Coach, Crocs, Columbia Factory Store, and more to shop all month long. Join us as we mark 30 years of advancing research and empowering hope. Donate and access your exclusive savings today at tanker.com. Because nobody's going to call this morning and say, hey, Mark, can you believe on those awards last night so-and-so didn't win this or didn't win that? <laughs> oh, yeah, the person that sits in 2C will. <laughs> I've got some takers for that, I by know the way. you do. I know you do. <laughs> The Breakfast Flakes podcast brought to you by the Blue Cat Bar and Grill. Next to the Roadside Event Center in Huntley. The Blue Cat. It's where it's at. 525 Flakes are in. One line Monday. 49 degrees at the airport. I had 44 at the house because it's that time of year. Uh, folks, still nice daytime temperatures. Just no precip. And uh, boy, could they use it down at that elk fire because they got some wind this weekend. And that did not make things a whole lot better. And they're talking maybe that one doesn't get put out until it snows. A lot of rocky terrain down there. A lot of mountains. Just stuff you can't get to to fight the fires. Last week of our cash codes, 820 and 920. If you're playing along with those. If we've had any local winners, I haven't heard about it, but that runs through Friday. Talked a little bit about this last week, then I got a call from a member of the family last night uh, out of Willie's Bar Wednesday, going to be a big fundraiser, Kevin and Miranda Morales. Uh, if you played basketball, you know the Morales family out there, and uh, his wife has been diagnosed with breast cancer, and they're doing a fundraiser for her. She is wrapping up five months of chemo at the end of October and then going to undergo surgery and radiation so obviously it's very serious and uh, they're bringing the community together try and raise a little money they've already set up a bank account with Stockman Bank for donations make those to the Amanda Morales Benefit Cancer Fund and then Wednesday night at Willie's Bar they're going to have silent auction get together kind of things we do in small town America to help each other out and I suspect that'll be busy where's Willie's? Uh, out in Warden. Oh. oh. I know you're going to find this hard to believe, Paul, but there's a bar Whoa. that I haven't been in. Really? It's, it's true. It's true. Talk to some friends that are in the know in Missoula, and there are some rumblings about uh, their football coach, Bobby Hawk, over there. Oh, yeah? They got, oh. Wh- got whooped pretty good this weekend. In fact, from the uh, Grizz Facebook page, I saved one this morning. Grizz losing overtime, 55-48. to 48. Congratulations to Weber State. Also, Grizz fans do better. Don't throw bottles in the field at the opposing team when they're celebrating. We can't win them all, but we can be classy in defeat. Well... Grizz are now four and two, and Weber moves up to three and four. That can't make them happy. Well, I don't know how they won. <laughs> I don't know how and, they won. And Mark. that was an interesting insight on Grizz football. Because <laughs> you know, I was seating, so I can listen to the games. I was going back and forth. Right. But you you can't expect a team like Weber to come into this atmosphere and have any <laughs> chance of winning. You just can't. The twelfth man is such an advantage only in Missoula, not Seattle or uh-huh. any place. Only there's no way there's no way you could come into this atmosphere and expect your team to perform. Huh. That was every time they got the lead. Ah, uh, okay. And then at the end, when the guy was about to kick a field goal, well, this is virtually unmakeable. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this atmosphere uh, and the pressure up an, here. An unmakeable field. I've un- never heard that. Virtually unmakeable. Huh. Yeah. Uh, was such an advantage. Wow. That's why we're Big Sky champs after they scored and went ahead again. That's why we're the Big Sky <laughs> champs again. And they lost, by the way. Uh-huh. Wow. I needed a barf bag. <laughs> Listening to that. Well, on any on any play by play, there's a little bit of, of, of a homer, you know. Our guys are better, our guys are better. But, a little bit. But Missoula has always been that way for as long as I can remember. Yeah. The people in the north end zone are not listening to your broadcast. No. Okay. They're kids mostly. They're nuts. They're they're jumping up and down, screaming. Half of them are inebriated or high, one of the two before the game. They all party up and not the tailgate. They don't have their radios or their Walkmans on listening to you. No. So when you give instructions to them, <laughs> you're not having an impact. Right. It's crazy. But um, just, a, just a monumental task of having to come in to our home 
with this environment and expect to walk away with a W? Mm -hmm. I mean, you should have heard this stuff going on, Mark. Wow. Well, and, you know, last night at the uh, the playoff game, fans did the same thing on the guy in left field. They had to delay the game for 12 minutes because the left fielder robbed Mookie Betts of a home run earlier and uh, went up into the crowd and caught it. I saw that. Yeah. And then uh, later in the game, they started throwing trash at him because he, he was talking smack to him and, and they were talking back. Then they started throwing baseballs and trash at him, so they stopped the game for 12, 12 minutes last night and uh, disgruntled, you know. And so. mm. Well, and there's quite a bit of a John in that game, too, between players. Now, for guys like me, that makes playoff baseball more interesting. I'm watching the next one when those two play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and the Padres, uh, they won that one last night, so... What, six home runs they had? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they were just teeing off, but um, it was... Uh... But that's what that's what small town um, football radio is. Mm -hmm. You know, even though they think they're ESPN, oh yeah, or nationally being listened and and all, they're not. <clears throat> they're just it's just a small town college team. You and, and I, uh, you, you and I both did play by play starting out, right? It's very rare that anybody at the game is listening to the radio. Oh, yeah. you're doing play by play for the guys that are that are seeding mm -hmm. and can't get there. Right, right. That's it. You know, or people that are at work or just you know, people that can't get to the games. There used to be, um, <clears throat> you know, there used to be people that uh, would go to the Reds game and, and take their radios and listen to Marty Brenneman or those guys call the game while they're sitting there. Right. Uh, but baseball was different than football. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think the offensive coordinator is monitoring you too. <laughs> okay, to hear your suggestions. And that guy, I just, I don't think so. Right. Could be. Highly unlikely. No. Well, uh, going back to when Mick Holine was the voice of the Grizzlies, my dad actually hired him away from newspaper and got him into broadcast, and he got his start doing play-by-play -play for the Lady Grizz before Bill Schwanke retired and he got into football, and the games were always like that. Not in our end zone! That's not going to happen today, Grizz fans! I know, I know. <laughs> I know. It's awful. <clears throat> were the cops downstairs when you got here? Mm -mm. Uh, there were two, two police scars downstairs when I got here, but uh, must have had a Darius ruckus breakout or something down there in the lobby. I don't know. but uh, Yeah, because I didn't see any people anywhere yeah, when well, I walked they, in. They left. And, and, uh, <clears throat> well, just down the street from us, that uh, those colonial apartments, that building, had three people shot this weekend. All down, uh, right down, just right down here on 27th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that place. I, I don't go in there in the daytime. <laughs> Yeah, and um, they kick the kids out of tumbleweed because they don't have sprinklers. Boy, great point. That's a they they remodel. It was a beautiful place. All kinds of doors, right? To get out, they don't kick them out. No, I'll, I'll guarantee you that doesn't have sprinklers. No, that that apartment building and far more dangerous to be in. Yeah, yeah. Where's the fire marshal there? B and B apartments, Mark. Did you have sprinklers? No, no. I don't know how many apartments there are in there, but uh, I think there was twenty three of them. Twenty three. They don't have sprinklers they're allowed to stay mm -hmm. and a lot of those on the third floor uh you can't get those windows open far enough to get out of them and then a lot of those folks are elderly you can't jump that far oh no but uh they kick kick the kids out of tumbleweed fire marshal kicked them out of there you're not allowed to s stay here in the winter when it's 20 below zero you have to go on the street and wait for a sex trafficker to roll by and offer you a warm place crazy that's just stupid mm -hmm. the stuff we do just dumb overbearing government stuff. Just dumb. Just dumb. You know, in the 50s and 60s, we didn't have sprinklers in anything. No. Nothing. Nowhere. More laws, more rules. Laws and rules. Rules and laws. More government, more bureaucracy. That's what we need. Yeah, it'd be nice, but we don't have them. Well then, how many of you folks, how many of you folks, hell, I had as many kids in my house as Tumbleweed had. <laughs> At one point you, you did. I <laughs> didn't I, Wilson? Did. God. I mean, I didn't have sprinklers. I didn't have sprinklers. I didn't have windows in the basement you could get out. You could if somebody was on the outside and, and grabbed your arms and pulled you through. But not the real honest-to-goodness 
his egress windows. Right. Yeah. None of those. I mean, I didn't, you know. Yeah, I had a half a dozen or so downstairs. <laughs> and, you know, kids, they'd bring friends home. Gosh, would kick them out on the street. That's why Mark and I jumped at it the minute they needed the money for plans for that facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's awful what they do. Awful. You know, I was looking up something else, but this, this so fits what you just said. More governments and, and more rules. I saw something about uh, on Facebook about uh, pheasant and antelope season opening up, and I was checking the dates. Oh, yeah, I think that's... Is that this weekend? I think it is. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Okay, Paul, now, you've hunted, so you know that there's special rules and districts and all that. Right. So if you're going out this year, I want you to pay attention. The most popular hunt in the state among non-resident applicants has been Region 7 multi-unit 007-20 tag. New for this year, this hunt has been split into two separate hunts. The 007-20 hunt will now be valid in Region 7 on the south side of the Yellowstone River. If you want to hunt Region 7 on the north side, you will need to draw the 007-21 tag. <laughs> really? We call it the James Bond tag. <laughs> Can, there's one standing right there. Can I shoot him or not? Yes. <laughs> Red fish, blue fish, yeah. cold fish, warm fish. That's right. And don't forget, you're driving back into town from Roundup during hunting season. You were out looking through binoculars at, at an antelope. You got to stop and get checked. Or it's a ticket. Yeah. It's a ticket. F W P. <laughs> money, 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 money. It's all about money. And there's points to get tags and bonus points. And folks, I'm not smart enough to hunt in Montana. Is what it looks like to me. Well, I heard. Uh, I heard Friday that they had some special. The F W P was conducting a special lottery up on uh, the Blackfeet Reservation or something, where you can uh, you can buy chances. They're ten dollars a piece, and you can just buy as many to win a a, a buffalo hunt and uh, some other kind of hunt. Okay. But now wait a minute, because the Democrats are running all kind of ads about how Tim Sheehy charged. <laughs> somebody to hunt on his property. And I'm thinking, well, well, FWP is working with them to raise thousands and thousands of dollars, and then they'll let you shoot something that's on their Uh land. Excellent point. Get ready for a spooktacular October at the Roadside Event Center. Friday, October 11th, join them for Bingo, a fundraiser for Pack the Place in Pink. Get tickets now for Dueling Pianos on Friday and Saturday, October 18th and 19th. And plan for a Halloween weekend filled with fun. The Blue Cat has fantastic food and drinks. Sushi and sliders on Sundays, Italian night Mondays, prime rib Saturdays, and loaded Bloody Marys all weekend. The Blue Cat Bar and Grill, Northern Avenue in Huntley, just nine miles east of the Metro Park exit. I finished uh, finished seeding yesterday, which is good. I knew I would if I could just hit it over the weekend. I knew I'd... Uh, the, the unofficial spokesman for Most Haven Farms yeah. had to give a lecture Friday. Did you? Yeah. So what's Paul doing the weekends? I saw this weekend he's seeding. And I mean, he's going to go from sun up to sundown. Mm-hmm. He thinks he can get it done this weekend. Mm-hmm. He's just going to sit in a tractor for two days? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's what that's what farmers do. You got to get it in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, but those are... those. Are, yes, they are long days. When you go in the kitchen, do you... You do half the dishes? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See? Well, no, that's dumb. Hello? Okay. <laughs> I wanted to get it done. Right. So I got it done, which is great because with antelope season coming up, that means I'll have fresh new tracks. Boy. I'm going to be watching. Oh, I know. I'll be watching. Mm. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be warm this weekend. This com- Well, you know, that could change. 72 both days right now. For the weekend? Yep. Yeah. So. so go ahead and shoot one of those 90-pound antelope. Animals and <laughs> throw it on top of your suburban, or put it in your little animal crate in the back, and drive into town. That kills me. <laughs> Leave it up on top where the flies get it, sun hits it. Mm-hmm. The, the one that gets me are the guys that have the carriers that go behind. Oh yeah, so you can get it uh, good and exhausted up. Yeah, and the exhaust pipes come out back there. <laughs> well, your meat's going to be smoked. <laughs> it's just going to taste like eighty-seven octane unleaded by the time you get it in there, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I'm making jerky. You you haven't lived till you've had my jerky. I uh, know. We've been we've been talking about this for 37 years, and we still get the odd guy that will call. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna bring you guys some of my antelope the way I do it. You can't taste the difference <laughs> between that and a filet mignon. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> See, the secret is buttermilk. Mm-hmm. I cut mine up and I soak it in yeah. buttermilk yeah. for nine months. Then, then <laughs> salt dip it. <laughs> And uh, you can't you can't tell the difference. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can tell. You can tell. Oh, man, Thanksgiving week last year, a Norton Swindu effect in Bozeman, requiring that unhoused people living in vehicles, tents, or RVs on the city streets move them every thirty days. So they just they just get a new neighborhood every thirty days. <laughs> yeah, every thirty days. Because hey, that's all you have to do. It was trying to adjust. Uh, Address the frustration from city residents about these people, and uh, <clears throat> the city then then the city was rolling out trash cans and porta potties to the areas where they would be. Well, how accommodating! Yeah, I could have used one of them. I was seeding over the weekend. <laughs> one guy lives on North Nineteenth. There said, "Yeah, I appreciate the potties and trash cans." I, w- I wanted to ask him. Uh, I'd like to ask him, "What time do you go to work? What time do you What time do you go to work, and how do you get there?" Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to ask him that question. Well, and how does that work when it's below zero and you're living in your car? One right off a of North 7th there. <clears throat> Businesswoman in Bozeman wants to increase the buffer between businesses and where people can set up their campers. City said they don't have enough <clears throat> authority to address persistent problems. You get a $25 fine after three warnings. 25 bucks. But, um... Well, because here in Billings, you can't park your RV in front of your house, can you? Uh, I... I don't you for a certain amount of time right, right. yeah so these guys they got a picture of these guys sitting there talking sitting in their chairs and uh the one guy's got a a tall boy looks like a rock star or something mm-hmm. the other guy's smoking eight dollar a pack cigarettes <laughs> and uh they're living in their campers they uh, they're gypsies they choose to live like that a lot of them yeah they just do they got a meeting coming up tomorrow and their commissioners are set to consider new urban Urban camping regulations, which will repeal the latest ones. The ordinance states that violations of the camping on public right of way ban will be a misdemeanor, could be punishable by a fine of five hundred dollars or ten days in jail. If you have a permit and you violate it, misdemeanor with a fine of a hundred. It's happening around Billings, folks. Mm-hmm. It's all over here. Outlying areas. You ought to see the people parking campers now all over the place. Living in them. Mm-hmm. I see them all over. They're out in the country, they're everywhere. One guy said, Hey, you living out here. Here, it's not cheap. I mean, we got to buy propane, gasoline to run our generators, space heaters. 15 bucks if he wants to take a shower at the truck stop in Belgrade. Mm. So that tells you how often they're showering. <laughs> well, I didn't spend 15 last Sick. month. Sick. <laughs> That's gross. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to know where these people work. I'm guessing most of them don't. I would agree with that. You can find a job in Bozeman today. But um, and it's a problem here in town, too. The campers everywhere showing up all over the place. And once they set up shop, and then they, uh, they just wait until they're harassed enough by either the city or code enforcement or police or something. They get enough complaint, and they finally would have to move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not all of them, but a lot of them, they just choose to live that way. Mm-hmm. That's just the way they want to live. Free, man. You know, just, uh, I'm guessing they're getting some assistance. I'm guessing they get money put in their accounts. Yeah. Well, it's got to come from somewhere. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, they just, they just got to do something. I mean, you just, it's dangerous too. You know, they create blind spots, all kinds of problems. So, hmm. I did a little research for you this morning, folks, because this is driving me crazy. I listen to this bull crap when I'm seating <laughs> and on the tractor. All. It just drives me nuts. Uh-huh. The jobs report came out on Friday. And, of course, your media. Oh, unbelievable jobs report. They got Joe Biden for a minute. He was able to put on pants and get in front of a microphone and say, God, our jobs. This jobs report just shows how great our policies are and uh what Binomics has done created this many jobs over this time frame. It's just unbelievable. And of course, all the media kisses his ass. Mm-hmm. Oh, unbelievable jobs report. Way better than, I mean, this just shows the policies are, I mean, just filled you people full of bull crap. So, first of all, I went in and I got the jobs report from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, they will 
this week sometime probably lower that 254,000 that they had for September. They'll probably drop it by 10. But even if they don't, the labor force participation rate in America is only 62%. The number of people not in the labor force who currently want a job, 5.7 million. Get ready for a spooktacular October at the Roadside Event Center. Friday, October 11th, join them for Bingo, a fundraiser for Pack the Place in Pink. Get tickets now for Dueling Pianos on Friday and Saturday, October 18th and 19th. And plan for a Halloween weekend filled with fun. The Blue Cat has fantastic food and drinks. Sushi and sliders on Sundays, Italian night Mondays, prime rib Saturdays, and loaded Bloody Marys all weekend. The Blue Cat Bar and Grill, Northern Avenue in Huntley, just nine miles east of the Metro Park exit. Well, they must not want them very bad because there's 7.5 million jobs opening. Employment in food services and drinking places. That rose by 69,000. So fast food restaurants, places like that. Employment in government continues its upward trend. Folks, we're broke and we keep adding a city the size of Bozeman every month do our government payrolls. Why? Benefits, federal retirement. Once you're locked in, you're locked into a Fed job. And they vote a certain way. That's right. Continues to trend up. 45,000 jobs. Social assistance programs. Social assistance programs added 27,000 new people. Employment. This is from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Employment showed little change, though, in the major industries in America. Mining, oil, gas, manufacturing, wholesale trade, retail trade, transportation, and warehouse. Professionals and business services, virtually no jobs were added. Geez, that's a little different story, isn't it? Average hourly earnings for employees on non-farm payrolls, $35.36 an hour. The average work week, now. Now in America, excluding farm workers, 34 hours a week. That's the average now. 34, 34 hours a week. Now, just absolutely wonderful job. I mean, unbelievable, this Democrat president and what he can do. So I said, well, let's compare that to, for instance, February of 2020 okay. when Donald Trump was there. Oh, here's another headline. U.S. adds a robust 254,000 jobs, okay? February of 2020 under Donald Trump. He added that month 273,000 jobs. So 25,000 more than Biden and his staff just added this month. And the headlines were dismal jobs report for the Trump administration. <laughs> jobs market tanks under Donald Trump. These are all headlines. Joe Biden said this is an example of bad Trump policies. Now, compare that to what happened on Friday. Now, let me give you some numbers here, folks. You know, we were just getting into COVID. Prior to that, in January of 2020, they added 467,000 jobs. Okay. Prior to that, in December, they added 510,000 jobs. And prior to that, in November, they added 647,000 jobs. But these jobs that they added on Friday, we've never seen anything like that before. Now, here's Be something. Because how many people are going to go back and check the numbers? Right. I, I remember this. Joe Biden, this is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Joe Biden, since he took office, 14.8 million jobs have been added to payrolls. Okay. All right. Now, in that. That April, in that April, which was when COVID was peaking, 20.2 million people lost their jobs. 20 million lost their jobs. Why? Government mm -hmm. and everybody. You don't get vaccinated, you lose your job. Medical, lose your job. You don't do this, you lose their job. Lose your job. So COVID, because of COVID, 20 million jobs were lost. Military members were being not even honorably discharged that refused the vaccine. So that's 20.2 million. Biden has added 14.8 million of those have come back. We're still we're still 6 million jobs behind where we were in the spring of 2020. 
Funny that doesn't get covered. And a lot of those jobs were lost because of government. You know, you know their big thing right now, how people ought to be able to make their own medical decisions. Guess what? You weren't able to make your own medical decision then. And people lost their jobs. That's right. You get vaccinated or you're fired. Look look what happened to places like the Billings Clinic and all the, you got to get vaccinated or you can't work. These people didn't take the jab. And we don't know the test results of that for 75 years. Pfizer doesn't have to release what they found out about the vaccine for 75 years. And do we think that's because it's great news? Uh huh. <laughs> Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. But isn't it funny how the narrative changes from those jobs reports to this one? That's a lot of jobs. When the Trump economy was rolling, I mean, it was just gaining steam until COVID. 467,000 in January. I mean, November 647,000. And then COVID hit. And all of these companies bought into all the spin and all the false narrative that we told you about from the guy that invented the vaccine. We told you about it. No. Nope. You get it. You get the shot. You will not get COVID and you cannot spread it. Mm-hmm. But they didn't see. They didn't care about the truth. No, they weren't talking to the guys that invented that technology. They weren't talking. They didn't want it. They wanted the control. They wanted to shape a society that would listen and bow down to them. And they got what they wanted. And uh, so the end result is, folks, we're still we're still six million down from that 20. Well, and a lot of those people, a lot of those people, they just retired. Right. Remember the pilots? Yeah. Piss on it. Yeah. I'm not getting a vaccine, so I'll just retire now. I got my 25 years in. A couple years earlier than I wanted to, but yeah. you're not telling me what to Look do. Look how many people retired mm-hmm. and just said, fine, you're, I'm not taking that thing. You're not going to tell me what I what I have to do to my body. And they just, uh, they just got out of the workforce. Got out of the workforce. The thing that kills me about this report is the people are only working 34 hours a week and they're pissing and moaning about not having any thing. I can't make it. I can't pay my bills now. What am I supposed to do? Inflation is eating this up. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but you're working 34 hours a week. Mm-hmm. I did that Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, yeah, you did. 34 hours. Oh, yeah, I just can't. I just can't do it. Well, it's the mentality that's been uh, been built into people now, been hammered into them. You shouldn't have to work 50 hours. So, so what are you doing with the other 134 hours left in the week? You're waking 34 of them, mm-hmm. and you have 134 left? Well, you shouldn't have to work more than that and make 200000 a year. And that's what people think. That's what people think. And look at these jobs. You know, they're, oh, well, the jobs we're manufacturing, blah, these are good paying, blah. No, I just read you the numbers from the jobs report. Little change in the major industries. Virtually nothing in September in mining, quarrying, oil, gas, manufacturing, wholesale trade, retail trade, transportation, warehouse, information, financial activities, professional and business services. Virtually nothing in any of those aspects added in the month of September. So where did they come from? Government, social assistance programs, and food and beverage, i.e. fast food drinking establishments. That's where they came from. Not good, solid, one-income household type jobs. Mm -mm. They didn't come from there. But you don't get this in the jobs report. What you get is this. U.S. adds a robust 254,000 jobs. That's what you get. Our policy are working. That's why people have campers all along the roads mm-hmm. in Bozeman and Billings in every city in America and are living in tents. Right. Good point, Hank. Laid off 700 people in Columbus. There you go. The mining. Yeah. In that category. Yep. And you notice these are always non-farm payroll numbers. How come people in agriculture don't count? <laughs> How come? You know, it's like when you get the inflation numbers, they uh-huh. exclude food and gasoline. Well, because you guys in all your hours you're screwing up our stats. What What the hell are the two <laughs> biggest expenses for families in America? Mm-hmm. Food and energy. Right. Doesn't matter whether it's your power bill, your gasoline bill. No, we exclude those. So they exclude, they exclude uh, non-farm. Why? Because farm payroll traditionally tends to be lower mm-hmm. waged, and they don't want that to affect their numbers. No, no you're right. You, you can't. I can't get a kid to come out and help me stack bales and pay 
pay them $39.36 an hour. You little crap. <laughs> That's not the little I, 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 I almost said it. I'll do it myself uh-huh. before I pay you 40 bucks an hour uh-huh. and watch you stack seven of them. <laughs> and... I only got to work 34 hours this week. So I can't really come back Friday. Uh, yeah, I, that's I right. Think. See? <laughs> that's why they exclude all those. Uh... Job numbers. Isn't it funny? The tale, in the words of Charles Dickens, the tale of two cities. Mm-hmm. Robust. And then you look at the Trump days. Dismal job numbers not looking good. Trump policies ruining America. Mm-hmm. 600,000 jobs he's adding. Well, if you live in a camper, though, and you happen to win the Flakes trip, that's one week where you don't have to worry about where to live. Yeah, but it's going to be hot for you. That's true. And you got to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. Because even when you win something, (laughs) the government sticks it up your ass and rotates it. That's what they do, Mark. That should be a bumper sticker. (laughs) Well, (laughs) well. But it's true. Yep, because that's what they do. Uh, but, 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 but before you can go on vacation, you got to pay us. Mm-hmm. You got to pay us first. Mm-hmm. And I'll guarantee to you this, folks. We have 150 people going on this trip this year. Mm-hmm. We've had we've had the most interest ever yep. in this trip. If we could have got more planes and more rooms, we could have probably had 200 go. Oh, I have no doubt. We've had more interest in people trying to win it that wanted to buy it that couldn't get in. Right. And I'll guarantee you this. None of those people that are going on this trip worked 34 hours a week to get where they're at. No. No. None that I know of. No. And we know we know probably um, 80 to 90 of these people that are going because mm-hmm. they've gone before. Right. None of them. They 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 work that in three days. Yeah. Not 34 per week. No. The ones that are 34 per week and less they're living up in Bozeman waiting for the porta potties <laughs> and the food truck. Well, as you're talking about the porta potties up there in those campers, yeah. Keep in mind, not every one of those campers is close to a porta potty, so watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there you go. So All right. First news coming up, quarter after six. The Breakfast Flakes Podcast brought to you by the Blue Cat Bar and Grill. Next to the Roadside Event Center in Huntley. The Blue Cat, it's where it's at. At Humana, our Medicare Advantage plans give you coverage and care you can count on, along with guided support to help you feel your best. You could have a plan with a $0 premium or an all-in-one plan that may include medical and prescription coverage, as well as routine dental, vision, and hearing. Learn more at GetHumana.com. Humana, a more human way to healthcare. Humana is a Medicare Advantage HMO and PPO organization with a Medicare contract. Enrollment in any Humana plan depends on contract renewal.